Coming up in this episode, a preseason friendly where the coach takes responsibility. A friendly that has both clubs sweating. And it's not a party until someone gets arrested. Hello once again ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the channel Hell Dominance. Anthony here, please remember to like and subscribe and also click that notification bell if you're enjoying what you're seeing and if you want to continue seeing more. So, we're going to begin with that last story on the credits as Latrell Mitchell and Jack Whiten have been arrested, allegedly arrested, over an alleged brawl that broke out whilst they were celebrating a 30th birthday. This was followed by video that has emerged of the police arresting NRL star Luttrell Mitchell following an alleged incident in Canberra where, with fellow player Jack Whiten, with the league's integrity unit now investigating. Reported that Mitchell and Whiten, who are regarded as very close mates, on Saturday have been out celebrating Whiten's 30th birthday before they allegedly tangled in a fight between themselves near a Canberra nightclub in the early hours of Saturday morning, Sunday morning. While the News Corp publication The Daily Telegraph reported witnesses thought it was not more than a friendly wrestle, police were called to the scene and Mitchell was charged with resisting arrest while Whiten was also charged. Seven News in Australia published a video from a witness of Mitchell being arrested, lying face down on the ground, surrounded by three and then four police officers. Mitchell is heard screaming my shoulders multiple times, appearing to be in serious pain. As he complains about the treatment, a young woman is heard, you literally are hurting him. They weren't doing anything. News Corp reported Mitchell sought medical assistance after the incident and will need to pass a fitness test to play for the up in the upcoming All-Stars match. The duo reportedly spent the night in police cells before Canberra Raiders Chief Executive Don Ferner drove Whiten home, while Mitchell started making his way home to Sydney. A statement from the police at... Uh, from the... Sydney Morning Herald read it was about 3.45 today Sunday ACT policing responded to reports of a disturbance near a nightclub on Bunda Street in the city. Two men a 30 year old from Baiwang New South Wales and a 25 year old man from Chief uh, Chifley New South Wales were arrested at the scene. A 30-year-old man has been charged with fighting in the public place and failure to comply with an exclusion or direction, while the 25-year-old has been charged with fighting a public place, a fray, and resist territory public official. Police also confirmed the two men were expected to face the ACT magistrate court at a later date. After the incident, it was reported by the Daily Telegraph Mitchell and his partner were due to stay over at Whiten's house that evening. In a statement from the NRL, a spokesperson told Fox Sports uh, the NRL Integrity Unit has been made aware of the matter and is liaising with the Rabbit Holes and Raiders clubs. Both South Sydney fullback Mitchell and Raiders 5-8 Whiten were preparing to play in the Indigenous All-Stars team against the New Zealand Maori All-Stars at Rotorua uh, next weekend. They've represented New South Wales together in the past Origin series, while they have also been key members of the Kangaroos Rugby League World Cup triumph late last year. The South Sydney Club's statement on Sunday read, The South Sydney Rabbitohs are aware of the alleged incident involving Latrell Mitchell this morning in Gambra. The Rabbitohs have informed the NRL Integrity Unit about the alleged incident. The Rabbitohs will make no further comment at this stage. Which was basically echoed by the Canberra Raiders in their statement. The club is our, as informed the NRL Integrity Unit and is cooperating with the ACT Police. 
we will have to see what comes of this incident when it comes to their involvement in the All-Star game. But it wouldn't surprise me if they either be pulled or request to be relieved of the duties of being involved in the All-Star game. At this point, it is all allegedly done, but for a, for a game to do with peace and things like that, we'd have to have a look to see what comes of it. Good luck to all involved in the game, by the way. And we come to the first friendly that we have knowledge of was Wakefield Trinity and St. Saint Hull FC in the David Hopkiss um, trophy friendly that the two sides put out. But Trinity fans were not exactly treated to a good spectacle this afternoon after after they were demolished by a rampant Hull FC side. The black and whites registered 10 tries to Trinity's zero with Wakefield head coach Mark Applegarth naming a youthful side something which took a number of supporters by surprise. With a Super League season less than two weeks away, the fixture would have been good preparation to lay down a marker for Friday night's clash against Catalan's Dragons. The left C came out resounding victory victoriously in the 56 points to nil victory at the B-Well Stadium. All the try scorers and the time that the tries were scored are scrolling above, across the bottom of the picture right now. However, Mark Applegarth has noted the lessons that have been learned from, a, from the hammering from Tony Smith's side. He said we knew we were coming up against it with a team we named against the full strength of FC team. Speaking to League Express, Applegarth said, I'm glad that the lads that were in our thoughts for round one came through injury free and it was important that we got another half a game under their belts. I take full responsibility for the game, I'll wear that one so there are no dramas there. The main thing is we got through it injury free and we can start building towards round one which is where our focus lies. As silly as it sounds, although we had 56 points put on us, I'm proud of them against the proven Super League side, and we had a glorified reserves team. Applegarth did actually hail the youngsters and revealed why he had chosen that team, with Mason Lino, Matty Ashurst, Akalepi Tanganoa, Lewis Murphy and Jay Pitts, just some of those absents from this preseason friendly. I'm proud of young la the l young lads. We've had four lads who haven't played under 18 rugby yet, and we dropped them straight in out of our scholarship. Apple Gav continued. It was a great learning opportunity against a proven Super League opposition. Oh, we're only two, one or two faces from what was their strongest lineup. After 25 minutes, we brought Jai Whitbread off from his first stint, and he had made seven more tackles than the whole of the whole FC combined, so it tells you what sort of momentum they had there. We've got what we need out of that Featherston game. We had overexposed some of those lads, and we didn't want to risk them injury-wise. It was a little too close for a round one game, well, that one round one game even, so we wanted to give you a chance. We always said this whole game would be 50-50. Either way, we knew we would learn something. To be flipping about it, I think the main thing that they were going to learn from this experience was don't play that sort of side against a full side who are eager to impress and do better than their third lowest position in Super League history. Third from bottom, Hull FC. Playing Wakefield Trinity were four from bottom. Both want to improve on those factors. One has a lot of money and a lot of changes and a lot of star power brought into the club. Wakefield, not that team. 
We'll have to see how Wakefield go during the season. But look, it's a rookie coach. Not much change in the back line. It's going to be difficult for them. Plus the lose it, loss of the player like uh, Jacob Miller. That can only count against what this team can do. And finally we go to the tempestuous uh, game between Leeds Rhinos and Hull KR, which was at the Selwyn Group Craven Park in East Hull, ahead of the Super League season. Both sides were looking to create momentum and get like, some good minutes in the legs and expecting it to be as intense as it was. The Robins and the Rhinos had a fiery clash with for their pre-season friendly and it's safe to say that whole KR fans are well into the passion that a new season brings. Passion has been seen on the field but maybe of the wrong side what, as there was three yellow cards shown during this game. The first came when a dangerous tackle from Elliot Minicello was brought out the first yellow card which was hit on Richie Myler as the Robins looked to mount pressure after taking the lead 6-0 through Ryan Hall, a typical try from him to get on the end of it. According to reports, it was one of those tackles that in the past would have just got a penalty against them, a lift tackle basically, but in this day and age with player safety and reducing injuries and head injury, injury assessments and things like that, it was deemed worthy of a yellow card. No, don't get me wrong, there was more to come. Hull FC, well, Hull KR, sorry, um, dominated the game up until half time, taking a 16 points to nil lead through another try from Ryan Hall, this time from Dummy Half, and the first try for Hull KR from Tom Opicic. The game was getting even more feisty as Hull KR looked to turn the screw. Lachlan Coote was fed out the back and slipped but copped Aidan Caesar's shoulder to the head. Caesar was subsequently simbinned and for his part in the altercation with Coote. Afterwards, Coote then followed him off the field. This means that all three could be facing a ban from round one, with Hull KR hosting Wigan Warriors and Leeds going to Warrington Wolves, who will also be worried about the availability of other players like Josh Maguire, following a mystery red card last night against Lee Leopards in Ben Curry's testimonial. A further concern for both coaches Rowan Smith and Willie Peters today is that three penalties were given away in 30 minutes for dissent. Something that no coach wants to see, but hopefully doesn't start creeping into the game. We have respect for the referees and we need to cover that on the on the total non-stop rules we've been taught since we were juniors playing the sport. You do not batch at the referee. If you do, you march 10 metres further down the field. But we're seeing instances, more and more of them, where he is a back chatting, telling the referee this, that and the other. I think this is the right time to jump on it and make sure that players do not get out of hand with it. If it is just the referees being strict on the rule, no back chat whatsoever, then great. But if it's not, and the players are taking liberties, that's just wrong, and we need to stamp it out. Yeah, like we said, like that referee in the other call, Nigel Owen says, it's not soccer. You want to do that? Go and play on the Sunday League field. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching. And it's another one in the can for you all to enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share this video worldwide, as well as clicking on that notification bell for any new videos or updates that might be coming your way in the near future. 
Tell me what your thoughts are in the comment section below about our stories today, as Rugby League is getting more and more ratcheted, ratcheted up for Super League season to start. Plus, games are plenty coming soon. We saw last night the Featherston versus Keithley match. Tell me your thoughts on the game in the comment section below. But at this means at this moment, I'll bring you more about that and the fallout in the future. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please remember to share, share, share this video worldwide. I'll end the episode as I always do by wishing you all the very best. So please stay safe, and I'll see you in the next episode.